Hey, welcome to another video. In the uh, continuing process here of our Math Quiz app, I'm going to now create the button listeners for each of our buttons on our app. So let's start with the start button. So let's see, what do we got? Button start. And let's do a set on click listener. And now I am looking for something in between these uh, parentheses, right? So in the past, many of the examples went like this. We type in new and then we type in click listener. And I choose the option there and it creates a whole bunch of code. So what I'd like to do instead of putting the um, code inside of each button, we're going to share click listeners. So let me show you what you can do. You can separate the click listener idea and just cut him out of here. So I'm going to cut this. All right, so you can see that I have taken this code and removed it from where I've normally placed it between the parentheses. So what I'd like to do is to create a, a click listener variable and assign it to whatever this thing is. So let's type in the actual, the usual view and on click listener and give it a name. Let's call it start button click listener. So now this variable here, we can copy and paste in down here. This is the exact same function. And you're going to ask, why would we separate these out? Well, I'm going to show you this because in the next buttons, which are the answer buttons, we want to share one click listener among all the four buttons. So I'm just giving this as an example of how to split these in two pieces. So what happens when I click the start button. Well, first of all, I want the start button to disappear. So the first thing I have to do is figure out which item on the screen was sent here. So it's pretty obvious as the human to say, well, there's only one click listener and there's one button, so they must go together. But of course, the computer doesn't think that smartly. So we need to actually put in a variable here and we'll call it uh, another start button. And so this item here is gonna become equal to V. So V is this parameter that was passed in here. The variable V is a view. So this is telling us what button on the screen sent the message here for the click. And it's telling us in the error on the compiler that says, hey, you're trying to take a view object and you're assigning it to a button variable. Can you do that? Well, button is a descendant from view. So view is the is the super class or the abstract class and button is one of those inherited classes so since it is an inherited thing you're supposed to be able to cast this so if you put in the word button in parentheses it's going to tell the computer that hey this view I guarantee you is coming from a button I won't send you a click from any other object like a click from a, a text edit or a progress bar it's just coming from buttons so you have to believe me it's a cast so now I have this start button variable. I'm going to do something with start button. I'm going to do set visible. Set visibility to invisible. So I could put in the word false, and that would work. However, there's a more, uh, more appropriate way. You type in view, and then you type a, these constant variables. So invisible is the uh, setting I'm looking for. Now, as soon as we press go, I want to also kick off another function. So let's create a function called start game. And then later on, we're going to have to be able to program that. So down here, I'm going to have a private uh, void start game. And then from there, we're going to pick up the gameplay. For game, there'll be several options that we have to get going. So we'll have to generate a new question. We'll set the text on the answer buttons. We'll enable those buttons and then we'll start the timer. So start game will begin and do all these things at once. So let's save that for the next video. So in the next video, we'll do the start game method. So we'll create the questions and set the text on the buttons and start the timer. So that's coming up soon.